Welcome to the CAAPM 9.7 Web UI Enhancement Release Session, part of our CA Educate series. My name is Mark Shenny and I'm an APM product owner. The topics for this session will include chart improvements, support for dashboard widgets, rich email notifications with contextual data, browser support, and APM documentation wiki. As a production support analyst, I want to pinpoint the source of the problem, keep the applications running, and feel a level of mastery over my job. Visualizing outliers for live or historical data help me characterize trends and pinpoint risks and quality impacting my end users. I also want to be able to export data points to be analyzed in other tools such as Excel and share them with other stakeholders such as application architects and performance engineers in my organization. We've also added support for dashboard widgets to help support analysts improve the visualization and analysis of monitored environments. Support for the new dashboard widgets in the web UI include Lens, used for filter, filtering monitored elements, Line, horizontal and vertical elbow connectors, Line connector, Polygon, and more. Summary type views known as XML type views, which are a combination of widgets used to summarize selected context, are also supported. Without further ado, let me give you a demo of chart improvements and support for dashboard widgets. 9.7 provides a unique way to visualize outliers in any time series chart, allowing for support analysts to quickly pinpoint abnormal behaviors. Drilling down into the chart for further analysis persists the min-max setting and allows the analyst to share the URL with the settings in emails, IM, or in ticketing systems to quickly enable others to preserve the issues found. Click on the CSV export option allows users to export the data points for any chart as a CSV file to be analyzed with your favorite editor such as Excel and to share the exported data with other stakeholders within your organization. Personalized and customizable dashboards are often used to simplify the visualization and correlation of important key performance metrics. Improving the support for dashboard widgets helps the support analyst be more effective at triaging problems. Using the dashboard editor, I will use connectors to show linkage between critical components and will identify the flow of these transactions. I will also add a summary view, which is a combination of widgets in this case to monitor the heap of the TixChange web application server that has had some past memory leak issues. I'll finish off the dashboard editing using a scribble to autograph my dashboard. We've also added support for the lens, which allows you to filter important uh, metrics or agents in the dashboards that you're looking at. So you can filter by selecting either multiple agents, by sorting, or by looking through the different pages of agents that you have, clicking the OK button, and be able to filter out only the agents that you need to look at in order to effectively triage a problem. By hovering over the icon that's now changed to yellow, you can see which lenses have been applied. And by drilling down, you'll notice that only that lens has been applied. You can simply clear the filter by clicking on the lens icon and clicking on the Remove Lens button. The 9.7 release provides more flexibility to customize and personalize the content of an email sent to support or end production analysts. This ensures that all contextual data about problem is available in the email and allows the end user to more effectively determine the urgency of risk or quality impact of a problem. Let me show you what this looks like in a demo. So here's an example of a rich email where an end user can configure the subject, the body, but most importantly provide dynamic parameters that has contextual information about the, con about the context of the alert. So in this case here I'll go ahead and author and add a new field and by clicking the dollar sign you'll see the dynamic parameters automatically pop up and I can select any parameters that's available such as the alert uh, description, alert name, uh, where the alert originated from, and several other important information that you may want to include to, uh, to an analyst to be more effective at triaging the urgency of the problem. 
Furthermore, you'll also notice that you can include inline HTML in the context of the email. Let's go ahead and assign this email to uh, an existing alert and let's see what the content looks like. So in this case here, I'm just gonna go and select a business transaction and go ahead and assign the alert. Perfect, and then I'll see when the trend starts trending up what the content of the alert response looks like. So as the alert triggers, what you'll notice in the alert is all the rich information, including time context. So the time context is very important to be able to understand when the problem occurred, but it is very important for an analyst when he clicks back in the context of the alert to be able to know 50 minutes before and five minutes after what's happened with this specific metric that's triggering the problem. Notice the rich HTML information that's been included, including simple things as style and formatting like bold, and as well as link. If this is a remediation problem, it's a known issue that engineering is looking at, you may want to refer the, the, the end users to the ticket in your ticketing system. In this case, clicking on the metric brings you back into context of the web UI in that time window when the problem occurred so you can better analyze the trend when the problem happened and understand if this is a, from a characterization perspective, if this is isolated to one server or multiple application service servicing, in this case, this business transaction. So all information is available, helping the end user be more effective at triaging an issue. As mentioned in the demo, rich email notification supports inline HTML, both supported in the email body as well as in the alert description that's available as a dynamic parameter. TestNow also provides more end user feedback about any connection errors returned by the SMTP server to allow the, our end users to ensure that email configurations are working properly. We've added SMTP headers in the emails sent by APM to enable more granular routing of emails. The fields that we've updated are XCA source, including the mom location and the IP, and the XCA application, which is specified as CA APM. We've also added two default templates. These default templates allow you to uh, further configure uh, elements such as the default header to be included in each email and also personalize th uh, items such as the styling of the email content for both rich email and plain text email in the, in, in the templates available. We've also added browser support for IE9, IE10, Firefox 28 and Firefox 29 as well as Chrome 37. We've also removed IE compatibility mode. We've now forced the compatibility. We've now forced the browser to default to the right version of IE, which has, which certainly impacted a lot of the end user experience. You'll also notice a change in our APM bookshelf to now a new APM documentation wiki, which will allow us to be a lot more proactive and better understanding our end user experience and how they interact with their documentation. You'll also notice a get started page on our wiki for the new users that want to learn more about how to use APM. This now ends our CA APM Educate session. Thank you for joining us in the WebView UI Enhancement session available in our 9.7 release. Watch more technical videos like this one in our CA APM playlist available on youtube.com educate.